after 20 years as a financial advisor, I can tell you that the people that succeed at investing, the people that succeed at achieving their long-term goals are the ones that believe they can do it and believe that they will do it. So I think money confidence, I think financial confidence is really, really important. I'm gonna dedicate this entire video to it. And I'm gonna start with myself because while I've been doing this for 20 years and I have a lot of confidence in myself today, you know what, when I was a young person growing up, I did not have a lot of confidence in myself. Uh, let's go for a walk and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of share a little bit about my history and how it relates uh, to a lot of folks. Um, you know, I, I grew up in a blue collar family. Neither one of my parents ever made more than twice of minimum wage. Uh, they provided a great life for myself, my brother and sister and I. Um, but we didn't have a lot of uh, financial confidence, right? Uh, succeeding with investments was something that, that rich people did, not normal people like us. I think I've shared with you that I started uh, my first investment when I was like 16 years old. Uh, unfortunately, I lost like a third of it or, or probably a little bit more than that in a very short period of time. Uh, and both of my parents thought I was kind of crazy at 16 years old. Uh, it was actually an IRA uh, to want to open up an IRA and I was kind of crazy to, to want to do that. Um, but up until that point, actually the money that I was putting into this IRA was money that I had raised by cutting lawns and uh, just doing physical labor, grass cutting, snow removal. Um, I was a, a underage butcher in the state of Ohio. You had to be 18 to be a butcher. Uh, so I kind of lied about my age, but I kind of associated, you know, the money that I made was in exchange for quote unquote hard labor, right? And now I'm a knowledge worker uh, and, and my job has challenges but I don't go home physically tired, right? I might be mentally tired. I, I might have been using my noggin all day long. Um, and I remember when all of this changed for me. It was when I was an undergrad um, and I was interviewing for a summer job and I actually got the summer job, right? It was for British Petroleum uh, in Cleveland, Ohio, which was my hometown. And nobody was more surprised that I got this job than me. And so, you know, it was that lack of confidence. I really, I'm, I'm forever grateful for British Petroleum uh, for believing in me at a time I didn't believe in myself. And I think a lot of people uh, are, are that way. And so, you know, here's some things that you can do if you're suffering from that. If you're telling yourself stories, you know, I'm not a good saver, I'm not a good investor. If you don't believe in your, your, your money skills, um, that's making it, I think, 10 times harder uh, to achieve your goal. So, you know, what, what can you do? I, I, I think the first thing that you can do is, is just information, right? Uh, I'm a big reader of books. I, I should say listener of books. I'm a big fan of Audible. This isn't sponsored. Jeff Bezos, if you want to sponsor me, I'd be open for that. Uh, but I'm a big fan of Audible. I'm always reading books. So, one of the things is just to read some books that will help build your confidence. I think books are one of the best investments out there. You know, you think about on Audible, if you buy a dozen credits up front, you can get uh, your credits for a book for $10 each. Uh, and that's an incredible amount of information. I find Audibles to be interesting. I also believe that we become the average of the six people that we hang out with uh, the most. So. You know, to the extent you can find other people that that also want to climb the learning curve and also want to become more confident um, in their money skills, in their investing skills, I think that's going to pay off in spades. So, you know, who you surround yourself with, what you're reading, and and really, for me at least, and I think for a lot of people, what you're trying to do is is change your self talk. You know, what are the things that you're telling yourself uh, regarding money? Because if you're telling yourself I'm not a good saver. You know, I like to go to the mall. I like to buy things that I don't need, uh, but it's just kind of an impulsive buy. If you're telling yourself those things, I think it's even harder to, to break those habits. Uh, so, you know, the first one, like for me was, I needed to, to tell myself, you know what? I'm a very valuable person. I have a valuable skill that I can share with the world. And um, it wasn't just how many lawns I could cut in an afternoon, right? It wasn't how many driveways I could clear of, of snow, but uh, I could actually make good decisions. I could help companies make good decisions. I could solve challenging problems. So 
But, you know, while I went to college and learned those things, I had, I had to think that in my head that, you know what, I've got this skill. I know how to use it. I can actually do this. Um, so uh, an, another one is, you know, just telling yourself that, you know, I'm going to learn the basics about investing and, and then I'm going to follow those fundamental truths, right? Uh, and for a lot of folks, um, they want to do it themselves, but I think a lot of folks are actually better served by working with a fee-only financial advisor. Obviously, I'm biased, but you know, I'm good at what I do. You're good at what you do, uh, and I'm a big fan of of having people help me with what they're good at. But you know, again, I'm biased. Fee-only financial advisor is not for everybody. Um, but that's another thing. If you don't have a group of friends around you that are good with money, that are good with investments, one way to get that is, you know, you can buy it and it doesn't have to be crazy expensive. You can buy it by working with somebody like a fee only financial, uh, advisor. And then, um, another thing is just kind of reprogramming are, are, are the way we think, and I've touched on this before, but I want to I want to go at it from a different angle. Um, you know, when I go home to Cleveland, I love seeing my brother and sister. I love seeing my mom. I love being there. But you know, they remember who I was when I was 18 years old, and in some ways that's good. But they also remember the knucklehead I was when I was 18 years old. And I think all of us have some baggage in our past. Uh, that we might be holding on to too close, right? Just because you made money mistakes in the past doesn't mean that that's the way the future has to be. And I, th I, I think you can say, okay, that happened a decade ago. That happened five years ago. That happened three years ago. And just because that's who I was then, it doesn't mean that's who I am today or who I'm going to be tomorrow. So I think thinking through those things is, is really important. Again, education, educating yourself. And that doesn't mean going to college uh, for this. It means reading some foundational books. I'll share a couple of them here. Uh, first, for, for building new habits. And I, I think a lot of what we do in life is kind of on autopilot. So reprogramming and coming up with new habits. There's a really good book by James Clear. It's called Atomic Habits. And it, it makes the process of building a new habit as easy as it can be, right? Um, we all know the story about New Year's resolutions and they last about two or three weeks. And then we're all back on the, on the regular um, activities that we were doing before, right? Why is that? It's because it's hard to develop habits. So James Clear's got a great book on, you know, once you set that goal, once you want to develop this new habit, how do you actually do it? How do you execute on that? And then a good book on money is The Psychology of Money uh, by Morgan Housel. I think it's an excellent book. It, it, it gives you a framework of how to think about investing, and I think it will set you up you're much more likely to be successful, I think, particularly if you're dealing with negative self-talk and, and telling yourself you're not a good investor. And oftentimes what comes with that as well is the desire to impress other people, right? To kind of erase those thoughts from our head is, you know, well, I'm driving this nice car. I must be successful, right? And oftentimes just the opposite is true. So uh, Morgan Housel's book, The Psychology of, of Money is good. And then... Um, just knowing the difference, and Morgan's book will uh, dive into this, but I think it's so fundamental, I want to mention it here on the video. And that is the difference between good debt and bad debt. I use the term destructive debt, which is credit card debt. It's big car loan payments with big interest rates. That's destructive debt. It's making it harder for you to achieve your, your goals. And then there's constructive debt, productive debt that allows you to um, you know, buy your house, uh, appreciating assets. If you've got a skill set in, in buying rental properties, you know, having access uh, to low cost capital to allow you to kind of buy a couple more rental units. If you know what you're doing, that's a, that's a tough field. But, you know, that's an example of productive debt. So I'll leave it there. If you enjoyed today's video, again, I'd love a like. I know you'd enjoy watching this video here that talks about average income in retirement and this video down here that talks about five reasons to retire as soon as you can. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.